Tie was released in 1995, was directed by Tony Scott, and it stars two of cinema's greatest acting talents, Gene Hackman and Denzel Washington. This film was also produced by legendary production duo Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer. Crimson Tide is a Cold War story and it tells the story of two Marine officers, Captain Ramsey, brilliantly played by Gene Hackman, and his newly elected exile officer, Hunter, played by Denzel Washington, who head the USS Alabama and have been tasked with stopping a band of Russian extremists who've hijacked a missile base and wish to start launching missiles to attack the United States. En route to their mission, they receive a message, Hunter and Ramsey. It's part of a message, it hasn't been confirmed and it has been verified, but Ramsey wishes to go ahead with the mission and launch the nuclear strike, but Hunter wishes to wait and find out what the message actually means. And we see a rivalry between the two officers and we see mutiny take place aboard the ship, but also at the same time, they are in a race against time to actually find out what the message actually means before World War Three actually commences. As always guys, please support this channel, hit that subscribe button so you can follow this channel, hit the alarm bell so you can get notifications from me when my videos are gonna be uploaded and also give this video a like as well. Crimson Tide is that rare film, that rare summer blockbuster that is a combination of both entertainment as well as being very, very intelligent and very, very gripping from start to finish. This film works thanks to some great direction, a great plot, great writing, but also two fantastic performances from its leads. Denzel Washington, Gene Hackman, two of the best to ever do it. These two could read the phone book to you and they will keep you intrigued. What was so interesting was the fact that they had actually worked together previously on a film called Power, released in 1986, but they didn't share any scenes together. In this film, they do. And their scenes are magnificent and very, very electrifying. Gene Hackman always gives a commanding performance and he has the capacity to act you off the screen. But Denzel more than holds his own. There were some mesmerizing scenes between the two, especially the rivalry scene, where Denzel's character assumes command of the ship and asked Gene Hackman's character to be arrested and asked to be thrown into his quarters. And this was the film, Crimson Tide, which firmly placed Denzel successfully as an actor that is capable of acting in the action film market. Because prior to that, his entries into that genre were not that successful. 1991's Ricochet wasn't a commercial or critical success. Another film he released in 1995, Virtuosity, wasn't received well by critics and fans alike. Crimson Tide is a very, very taut and suspenseful, but brilliantly directed film. The late, great Tony Scott was a master of the high octane action film. We saw him in Top Gun, we saw him in Beverly Hills Cop 2, we saw him in Revenge, we saw him in True Romance. He is a man known for directing very, very fast paced and action packed film. But in this film, Crimson Tide is a change of pace for him. He exercises some restraint. And this is a film that is driven by plot and driven by narrative. The action, there are some action scenes in this film, but they take second place. It is the plot that keeps you gripped from the get-go. From the mutiny that takes place, from when Ramsey's colleagues try to take over the vessel, from when Denzel's character tries to resume command of the ship. All of these are done in a brilliant manner. And again, it is not stylized. It's not done for Hollywood standards. It is not over the top. There are other scenes within the film that focus on other characters. This can feel like a deviation it doesn't. Every character within the film plays a part within the narrative. This film was produced by production legends Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer. And when you see those two names on a film, they represent a particular style of filmmaking. Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer were a brand. They were responsible for Flashdance, Top Gun, Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2. They produced Bad Boys. They produced Crimson Tide, they produce Dangerous Minds. They are known for a particular style of film which is very fast paced, lavish, brilliantly shot, and soundtrack driven. This was a change of pace for them. And you could see a different change in tone in the types of films that they would tell. And Crimson Tide would represent one of the final films from Don Simpson, who sadly passed away in 1996 after a drug overdose. The writing in this film is gorgeous. Michael Schaefer has captured military mannerisms and captured the tone of the military and the Cold War perfectly. But what was interesting enough is that Quentin Tarantino gave an uncredited rewrite. And again, I'm always fascinated that when someone does an uncredited rewrite, I'm always questioning, okay, where does the original work start? Where do the rewrites begin? And how much of the original draft is still within that film? There were certain scenes in the film that had the thumbprint of Tarantino over it. 
There were scenes in the film where you saw characters talking about actors who had starred in films involving submarines. There was a round table discussion where there was talk about war and what the definition of war was. That felt like a Tarantino piece to me, almost identical to the opening scene in Reservoir Dogs. And there was one scene between Denzel Washington's character and Danny Nucci's character where they're having a debate about comic books. Got the thumbprint of Tarantino all over it. And this marked the second collaboration between Tarantino and Tony Scott. Their previous collaboration was True Romance. The cinematography in this film is gorgeous. And it captures the claustrophobic elements of the film beautifully. And that is all courtesy of Darius Wolski, who is an excellent cinematographer. He worked on The Mesmerizing Crow that was released in 1994. And he's been a frequent collaborator of Jerry Bruckheimer's, having worked together with him on Bad Company, having worked with him on the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. And as if we weren't spot enough, this film has the legendary film composer Hans Zimmer, who composed the score. His use of an orchestra, synthesizers, all adds to the film. And it just enhances certain moments of the film in terms of tension. There are scenes when we see um, certain characters within the film drowning. There's battle sequences when they actually find out what that actual message means. The music used for that all works to great effect. And Crimson Tide had some actors in this film who will go on to become big stars. Viggo Mortensen, who's now an Oscar nominated actor after his excellent role in Green Book. We also see a young James Gandolfini who would achieve worldwide fame in The Sopranos. And when I was watching this film, there was one thing that I noticed. There was a scene in particular where Denzel's character has finished boxing and they start playing Sweet Home Alabama, which again, would be played in Jerry Bruckheimer's 1997 release, Con Air. But Crimson Tide, fantastic watch from start to finish. One of the best and most intelligent films from the mid to late 90s. And the legacy of Crimson Tide is that there were some brilliant relationships that were formed. Crimson Tide would be the first of five collaborations between Denzel and Tony Scott. They would work together again on Man on Fire, Deja Vu, Unstoppable, The Taken of Pelham 123, and it would be the first of three collaborations between Denzel and Jerry Bruckheimer. They would work together again on Remember the Titans and on Deja Vu. If you haven't watched it, I definitely recommend that you do. One of my favourite films, and again, still holds its own after 25 years. So I'll give this film a very, very strong 9 out of 10. So guys, that's my review. Like I said in the beginning, please keep on supporting this channel. Thank you for all those that have subscribed. Hit that subscribe button because there will be more content coming, guaranteed, more retro reviews. Hit that alarm bell as well so you can get notifications from me when my videos are going to be uploaded. Hit that like button as well. That's going to help the channel grow. Leave your comment with what is your favourite Cold War film or what is your favourite film starring Gene Hackman or Denzel Washington. Leave your comment in the comment section and I will see you on the next film review. Take care.